Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to be doing a tube talk type of video. This is a series I started a long time ago, like so long ago at this point, but it's just where I come on and we talk about a subject. Sometimes it has to do with YouTube, sometimes it has to do with the beauty community or just like makeup products in general. And today we are talking about single shadows versus eyeshadow palettes. Not the most controversial topic, but I thought for palette week this fit really well. And I also have been really evaluating my own personal habits when it comes to using eyeshadows. And recently it's really come to my attention that potentially single shadows shadows are really the way to go. Like, I don't think there's like a right or wrong answer 100% with this one, but I will say it seems like there are so many pros to single shadows, and yet I constantly want pre-made palettes. <laughs> That's what gets me excited. That's what I gravitate to. I talk about a lot. Like, that's what I want to see. And I thought I would break down some of the pros and cons that I see of either side, and we can just talk it out. I've done a similar type of video to this in my Tube Talk series on Sephora versus Ulta and I also did like influencers versus pro makeup artists so if you're interested in those topics I'll leave those linked down below but I also just like went over pros and cons and whatnot I hope this is interesting to you I wanted to talk this out for myself and I I think it's interesting to see the pros and cons list and then to see what my actions actually are when it comes to buying it's it's kind of trippy. So anyway, let's get into some of the pros and cons. Let's start off with single shadows. I feel like I have been on and off with single shadows. I think the community has also been into single shadows and then not as into it and then into it more. It kind of ebbs and flows. And so my collection over time, at one point I had hundreds of single shadows that were individually in like Z palettes and magnetized. And now I think I'm at like about a hundred or so single shadows. So still a lot definitely, but I mean, I have a lot of makeup in general so to me it doesn't feel like the most and it definitely doesn't make up the bulk of my eyeshadow collection like it had in the past so let's talk about some of the pros of single shadows or at least what I consider pros the first thing I have on my list is that when you are buying single shadows you're usually supporting a more indie brand a smaller brand and I really like that I really like the idea that I would be giving my money to a company where that money kind of means more obviously Obviously, all companies want to make money, but if you can be supporting like a small woman-owned brand, um, someone that's like trying to get, you know, their company off the ground and is selling great products but just doesn't have the exposure and the popularity that some of the other brands do, I think that's really, really cool. And so that's definitely a pro for me buying single shadows. The next point I have on my list and probably one of the biggest points four single shadows for like anyone is that you get to pick exactly what you want. If you're looking for this electric lime green eyeshadow, you can find that in an indie brand and buy that one shade you're really looking after. If you have a huge collection, but you're missing that one, I don't know, duochrome periwinkle, you can look that up with different brands and find the exact shadow that you're looking for and buy that one thing. So if you're looking to downsize your collection, only have one of each color, things like that, I think that single shadows are definitely the way to go you aren't buying a bunch of bulk because you get to pick exactly what you want you know you're going to like it obviously as long as the quality is there and like the shadow actually performs you know you're gonna like that shadow you should hopefully know that it's going to be something you're gonna get a lot of use out of or is like a missing hole in your collection and you just have a lot more control in that way the next point I have on my list for pros for single shadows I find that single shadows tend to have better finishes more unique colors and I also find this just in general with indie brands and because most of the time single shadows are sold by indie brands you just have so much when it comes to option that sometimes isn't even on the market if you were to go into Sephora you can't find a lot of these colors honestly or finishes or textures and even if you do again they're usually inside a huge palette and then you would have to buy the entire palette for that one single shadow that you like and so that is something that makes makeup fun again for me I think in this time of like so much makeup being on the market. It's really cool to see brands that are out there doing single shadows that you don't see all the time. It almost feels like sometimes you've seen it all and then you see something that actually is a little bit different from an indie brand in a single shadow and that's always really exciting. Another positive to me about single shadows is that they have less packaging and I feel like because of that, there's less waste involved. So if you're buying single pan shadows, they might come individually wrapped, which is usually to keep them protected, but overall you don't 
have this huge plastic palette usually is what they come in. Really the only thing besides like the packaging it might come in is the metal pan itself. That's what you're buying. You're buying a single shadow powder in a metal pan. And so there isn't a lot of packaging. There's not a lot of bulk to that. Whereas if you're constantly buying new palettes, those all come with so much packaging around them every single time. So that's just something to consider. And I do think it's a positive. This one I think is kind of far fetched, but if you happen to be one of those people who finishes shadows, if you buy a single shadow and you finish that one up, you can then go replace that one singular shade. And if you're in a palette and you like one shade the most in that whole palette and you use it up, you have to rebuy the entire palette to get that color if you really want it, if you're really missing it in your collection. So it is kind of nice that you can piece out your collection in that way and replace what you need to when it's used up without having to buy other shades. All right, moving on to my last two pros of single shadows. One of the things I really like about single shadows and probably my favorite thing I think is that you can rearrange the colors in a palette endlessly. If you have a lime green and you have a blue, I don't know why those are the colors I keep using as examples, um, but then you have browns and pinks and you have kind of this rainbow spectrum of shades. You can rearrange them and as new palettes come out, you can take that color story as inspiration. You can take the season that we're in or maybe a color trend going on and you can use those as inspiration, rearrange your shadows in the pan and make them look so much different. Color is relative and so rearranging different colors to be by each other can really change the entire look and feel of colors and like eyeshadow palettes. So I think that's one of the really cool things about single shadows that you can move them around in the pan because for me, it fights one of the hardest things which is makeup fatigue and not because too much is coming out but just getting kind of bored or, or wanting something new and you can constantly be making something look new in your collection and then that can hopefully help you refrain from buying because you are finding ways to repurpose and re-excite yourself about things you already have. And last for my pros, I think that single shadows are also a really great way because you can rearrange them to test out if you would like a trend or color story. So instead of going all in and buying a huge palette full of a bunch of colors maybe you're not used to, things you don't normally buy, you could buy a single or a couple singles in a color story or in a trend that you might want to test out. I put on here that you can test run that. So you can see if that's something that actually works with you or if it doesn't and you're only out like the two shadows, you can pass those on or whatever if they don't work out for you or you can really find out how much you're going to use that without having to splash out or buy the larger palette which usually can be more expensive but we'll get into the cons in a second but I think that's also another really important one with single shadows because as I try to shop better for myself and as I try to have less like dud purchases in my life I think that can really help so anyway those are the pros you might be thinking now like this sounds amazing why would you want anything else and that's how I feel coming up with this list I'm like wow single shadows just make like the most sense is what it feels like but we're gonna get into some of the cons and then that'll kind of segue us into the pros of pre-made palettes and whatnot so some of the cons or at least what I think some of the cons are are that single shadows can be more expensive individually than potentially buying a palette. Now this is not always the case because sometimes you have a Natasha Denona palette and it's very expensive and even if you price out each single shadow, you could probably find single shadows and remake that palette at a lesser price. But that's not always the same thing with something like, let's say an Urban Decay Naked palette, just because we can all like picture that. I believe that that palette has 12 shades in it. If you were to buy 12 shadows from a brand, even if they were only $5 a piece, that's going to be $60 whereas the naked palette I believe runs you right at 55 or did at one point it was like 50 originally or like 48 but then it kept going up anyway what I'm trying to say is that that is a similar price that's a similar price but five dollars is very very inexpensive for single shadows there are a lot of any brands that do them at that price point which is awesome but if you start creeping up if shadows start becoming seven dollars eight dollars nine dollars ten dollars a piece it definitely can add up and I know that if 
you don't have a large collection, sometimes buying and spending so much money on singular shadows can seem like too much of an investment up front and you might be more interested in getting more for your money. But I will say with this one, there are caveats because pricing of shadows, whether they're the single shadows or of palettes really can differ. If you're looking at ColourPop, it might be cheaper to buy the palette. If you're looking at something else, it might be cheaper to buy singles. You really have to just price that out, but that can be a factor. And when I'm talking about single shadows, I'm talking about things that don't have the packaging around them. I'm talking about makeup that is in a pan that you put into a Z palette because I do feel like traditionally, Single shadows that you buy that are pre-packaged, single shadows tend to be insanely expensive, kind of like the worst bang for your buck you possibly could do. I feel like the standard price of a single shadow like that is $20 and up, at least at Sephora for the most part. Like a Urban Decay single shadow, you just buy the one you want, it's like about 20 bucks. And if you go into NARS or any of the other brands, especially more higher end brands, they tend to go even more expensive. Those aren't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just the pans, which tend to be cheaper because you don't have all that packaging. Anyway, anyway, I, I think you guys know that, but just a little clarification. Another con that I wrote down for single shadows is that all the work is kind of on the consumer. And by this, I mean coming up with color combinations and color stories is on you. So if you aren't someone who's good at that, if you aren't someone who's good at pairing colors and, and being creative in that way, buying single shadows and being the one fully in charge of, of what's going to work together in a palette might not be good for you. You might prefer having someone else come up and do that part of the work for you so that you can just do your makeup with fun colors and not have to worry about that as much. So I do think that's a con. I love piecing together color. So it's like an easier thing for me and something I enjoy doing, but for other people that might not be the case. And so I could almost see it being a source of stress or being slightly stressful, figuring out what color combinations to come up with or even to piece together and buy. My second to last con is that if you are buying single shadows from different brands, sometimes they aren't in the same type of packaging, the same sizing, the same shapes. And that can be a little frustrating. I really enjoy when everything is very uniform. And for some examples here, currently I have three different shapes of eyeshadow. So this is like the classic like round pan shape. Um, I wish that everything just came in the round pan. I do prefer it. I just, I like a round pan, okay? So this is like, I feel like the classic standard, but then I do have some of these mini pans and these are from the ColourPop little palettes and I've depotted them. So these are circular, but smaller. And then my favorite magnetic single shadows are actually like these weird, uh, they're not squares. They're kind of like a rectangle. These are from Cleona. Uh, and I have obviously a ton of these. And so these definitely clash with the circles. And so if you're someone who's very into aesthetics and very into like things looking and matching up and all of that. I can see that being quite a small thing for some people, but other people, it really irks you. And as you build your collection, cause I think with single shadows, it is more of an investment type of thing because you're building a collection over time that hopefully you'll use and love and like filling holes of things that maybe you wanted but didn't have. You might be trying different brands. And so as you add to your collection over time, having those different shapes and pan sizes can be slightly frustrating. It can be difficult to store sometimes and put into palettes because do you just have it look messy? Are you trying to be uniform? Do you have like separate palettes for each brand? It just becomes like a whole thing. And if you really like to keep your makeup organized and keep it looking really nice, that can be potentially an issue. Let me know if that's an issue for you because I feel like for the people that it is an issue, it is like an issue for them. And last, I find that single shadows can be more messy than palettes. I find that they are more fragile because they're just like out there on their own. They're like just vulnerable little guys, okay? And so if you are constantly rearranging them to put into other palettes, coming up with different color combinations, just that extra handling I think can cause them to get broken, cracked, you can accidentally drop them, you can smash your fingers into them, you can like put your nail in them. I just think they get a little bit more wear and tear and I find that my magnetic palettes are always very, very like messy and more messy than something in a pre-made palette. And those are the reasons that I feel like that is, but it just seems like they always just look a little messy, they always look a little ramshackle. 
it looks more almost like an unfinished craft project all of the time. All right, so those are my points and thoughts about single shadows. Now moving on to the pre-made palettes. These are gonna be obviously anything made by a brand with a color story set in stone. I mean, if you're gonna depot this thing, it's going to be a process. You get what I'm saying, okay? We're talking about pre-made palettes. After telling you guys all of the pros and the amazing things about single shadows, it makes me feel like on paper, I should only buy singles. Like, what am I doing? I should only buy singles. But in reality, the pre-made palettes are what I'm drawn to. So here are the pros I can come up with. I'm not sure if they really uh, beat out the singles, but this is what I have. If you're someone who has a more for your money type of thing, philosophy about makeup, I do think palettes tend to be the best way to go. You can get a lot of colors, a lot of like shadows for usually less money than it would cost to piece it out if you were to like replicate that entire palette in single shadows. We talked about this. So if you are someone who really likes that bargain mentality and kind of just wants more and more makeup, you're not trying to be curated, you're not trying to have less, I guess, then palettes can be the way to go because you would be saving money. I think one of the things that I'm really drawn to about about pre-made palettes is that they tend to have a theme, they tend to have really fun color stories, and it might not be something that I've thought of on my own. And so it's fun to participate in that, it's fun to see that, I get inspired. And a lot of the times if I'm actually really inspired by a color story and the way that they're set up in a pre-made palette, I probably will want to buy that one instead of recreate it. I like, I wanna be in on that item. Now some single shadow brands or indie brands that do single shadows do bundle and they are color stories that are inspired by like the season or whatever they're inspired and excited to create and I do think that's fun so it basically creates a pre-made bundle essentially palette that you can put into your own collection um, you can usually buy them at a discount and again you're not picking that color story so you're getting that fun themed exciting thing without all the packaging so that's something but Overall, I would say it's way more fun in a pre-made palette. And that also segues me into packaging. I find that although for me, I try not to get sucked into packaging, I know that a lot of people like packaging. And if you're someone who is a collector of makeup, someone who likes having show pieces, likes buying limited edition things, something like the Sailor Moon collection, something like the Ciate London and Roger Rabbit collection, any of the Disney collections, that packaging alone can be a reason you would wanna buy the palette or even if you're not wanting to like never touch it it just is like a source of joy that you wouldn't get with single shadows they're just not packaged that way so that wouldn't be a factor but if that is something that you like pre-made palettes are definitely the only way you're gonna get that in eyeshadows another pro about palettes that are pre-made are that they are easily accessible if you walk into any store um, if you walk into Sephora if you walk into Ulta the majority and I want to say basically all of them are already made palettes very rarely do you walk into somewhere and you see a bunch of single shadows and then you can kind of create your own Z palette right there or magnetic palette right there. I find that is not how it really works. And so because it's just readily accessible, it's easy to get to if you're wanting to just go have fun and shop for some makeup and you wanna like touch it and be right there, the pre-made palettes are the way to go. Single shadows can take a long time to get to you. That is a con I didn't mention. Depending on the indie brands, because of backed up timing, maybe a, a huge influx of orders, shipping supplies being delayed, whatever it is, it can sometimes take a really long time for shadows to get to you. And if you're not willing to wait, um, if you want that instant gratification, sometimes those are not the way to go. I know that it can be so hard and I can be so impatient waiting for those shadows. Shipping can sometimes be more expensive because because again, it is an indie brand. And although I'm not in the cons, that is a con I think against single shadows that the pre-made is just so much easier and you can just walk down the street and get it. This kind of plays off the fact that palettes are more mainstream. If you're someone who's looking for a tutorial on a look, you probably can find a tutorial using a pre-made palette. Whereas finding something that's using the exact single shadows that you have might be more difficult. I know that not everyone follows tutorials, but if you are someone who still does, or if you use those as inspiration Congratulations to create looks, that can be a, a positive of having something that a lot of other people already have. You also have more reviews. So if you're trying to buy things that will work the best for you, there are way more reviews on palettes that are more mainstream, which tend to be pre-made. Um, whereas indie shadows, I think are getting more popular um, in the makeup community and you can definitely find reviews online. It's just more difficult and sometimes it's a little bit more of like a shot in the dark. Like I mentioned, because a con of 
single shadows is that they're fragile. I feel like palettes are less fragile. So you can be a little bit more rough. I don't think they're gonna get as messy. You're not gonna get as many chipped shadows. I mean, obviously if you just like drop your palette from like the, you know, your counter, it might break. But overall, like the life of the palette, I feel like it's a little bit more stable. And then to me, I just feel like in general, palettes that are pre-made tend to be more aesthetically pleasing. The whole point of them is to be packaged and look nice so that they can sell. And I think like single shadows are the broken down, deconstructed version of that. It's just so much more about like literally the powdered eyeshadow um, when it comes to single shadows. And when they're in the pre-made palettes, they can do smoke and mirrors and all of this other stuff to get you to buy it and sometimes the powder inside which is you know the functionality of the product is lost is totally lost and that's not even at some points the reason you're buying the item in the first place which would never really happen with a single pan like that's all it is it's all it's offering all right I'm gonna run through the cons because obviously you know there's like two sides of a coin here and you might have heard some of these but I do want to run through them so some cons of pre-made palettes I feel like they're just more waste in general a lot of the times you can get so many repeat shades whether it's in the same palette if you have a really large one which we'll get into later this week or because you have so many different pre-made palettes that kind of overlap with single shadows you don't get that as much if you are someone who doesn't want 17 mid-tone crease shade browns then pre-made palettes might not be the way to go like I mentioned if you run out of a shade it's harder to repurchase that and then that's not even counting the fact that that it might be limited edition you might not even be able to buy that palette again so if if you are someone who actually runs through your makeup, you might not be able to rebuy your favorite lid shade. Obviously with a pre-made palette, the color story is set in stone. It is what it is. You might like half the shades, you might not like the other half, and that's just the way the cookie crumbles on that one. And I find, although we've brought up that palettes tend to be a better value, you have to remember that you are buying one huge purchase at one time. And at this point in like makeup history, I don't know, that sounds so weird to say, but right now I feel like a regular sized palette um, you were gonna go into Sephora would cost you about $50. Give or take, about $50 seems right. And that's a lot of money to invest into one eyeshadow palette where you might only like half the shades, where if you went with a single shadow, you could buy seven shades that you really love for only $30 or $35. And so you can save a little bit of money, not spend as much upfront and really only get the shades you want. It's just something to consider anyway. All right, so that's kind of my list of pros and cons. And my final thoughts here going through, I feel like I should like single shadows more than I do. Okay, how many times do I have to mention these? I've been really obsessed with my Cleona shadows. And these really make me excited about single shadows and trying new indie brands, trying out different formulas and really enjoying a couple shades and not having to have all of these colors in a palette I never use. When I think of palettes that I really enjoy, a lot of the times I reach for the same colors in those palettes over and over and there are always shades that never get touched or used. And so I'm trying to take that into account and really learn about my habits when using makeup so I can make better decisions. I really want to buy from brands that I haven't before. So in, in all ways, single shadows seem to be the way that I want to go. And I, I think one of the things I'm going to try to do this year is buy more single shadows. I really do. I think it will be difficult. I'm not saying that I'm only going to buy single shadows from here on out by any means, but I think that at the end of the day, if I'm really looking at like not having makeup regrets, single shadows might be better for me. And I really think that a lot of the time, the packaging and the color story and the theming really gets me. It really just like, sucks me in more than I even think, more than I even think, because constantly that is what I'm still drawn to. So I, I think I'm gonna try to do that, but it's one of those things where it's almost like the Sephora and Ulta one that I did, where Ulta on paper is so much better, right, than Sephora. You get prestige brands, usually the customer service is better, um, they have way more discounts, their point system's better, all of that, but for whatever reason, I still like shopping at Sephora better. That's how I feel like single shadows and like pre-made palettes are for me but that's just me there's obviously no right or wrong answer guys I'd love to know what you think do you like single shadows do you like creating your own palette and rearranging them and having magnetic palettes and all that or do you prefer the pre-made palettes I will say I wanted to show a couple of my small palettes here I do think that one of the downfalls is that single shadows you could never have a palette this small full of single shadows I mean they're usually just not this tiny and this is so compact and ready to go and, and it's just like tied up in a nice 
nice little bow. And sometimes single shadows just seem like way more work than you know, buying this one thing and being on the go or something. So that's just one thing that is a positive, I think. And as I like smaller palettes, I'm realizing that it'd be really cool if brands were offering like really tiny little pans of eyeshadow in single form though. That would really switch it up. All right, let me know what you guys think, which side are you on? And if you have any brands that you really like their single shadows, um, maybe some indie brands, I would love to know if you have any good ones that are good quality, a good price. I'm, I mean, I love affordable. Let us know in the comments. All right, other than that, thank you guys for hanging out and sitting down and talking with me today. I think we have three more days of palette week left. I think today is day four. So um, stay tuned for those. And other than that, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.